there's a number of different hydroponic systems and about just as many different substrates we can use. Tell me about some of the different options for a hydroponic system. All right, so probably the standard that's probably been known in the industry for a while is uh, rock wool. It comes in different sizes. You've got really small pieces, you've got larger blocks that you can actually use for just growing the plants in, or you can actually move individual blocks into other types of systems. And so for this system, you could just set plants right into it um, right. or use these smaller pieces to kind of stabilize them in there. Right, so it comes in different sizes. Some of the smaller uh, rock wool uh, pieces you could actually use for getting stuff started. And then if you wanted to transplant it in here, if the plants aren't that big, then you can use uh, this to help stabilize it. Mm -hmm. So you could start seeds right in the rock wool. You could, mm -hmm. yes. And that's, um, these types of blocks you can put into a bucket type system, but you also have these smaller pieces in your floating system as well, I right. see. Yeah, the RAT system, I found that it works pretty well. You can start it from seeds or you can actually transplant into those. Okay. Um, what about this material? What do we have here? Uh, this is expanded clay. Uh, this has been pretty popular over uh, the last few years and it works pretty well. It's uh, the common name on it would be, or the company name would be Hydroton. Okay, and again, here you have it in your rack system, but um, if we were going to put this into a bucket system, you need a cup to hold it, right? Right, so net pots are pretty common as well. They come in different sizes uh, for actually growing the plants. Okay. Uh, what are some of the other substrate materials we have here? Uh, this is one that's actually uh, recycled plastic uh, from grow stones. And you can see here that it looks mm -hmm. kind of like rock, but it's really light material. It's porous. Lots of let it, it lets a lot of uh, air flow through this media, which is good for the roots. Okay, and this one's supposed to also release uh, silica to the plants? Correct, okay. which should uh, help in a number of functions as well. Okay, and then on the smaller side of silica, you have volcanic right. rock Right, so that, some volcanic rock that also releases uh, silica as well. Okay. Another small, particle size is kind of similar to that as the old standard perlite. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grow in it uh, fairly well as well. Does this tend to get a lot of dust in the water? Is there a problem with that or does it balance itself out? Oh, that's a good question. So it depends on the, the system itself. We actually used some in the Dutch bucket system and we had to use some paint strainers to actually hold it in or it would just run right through the media. Okay. Uh, there's also rock on the larger end of things. You, know, you can use river River rock works well mm -hmm. as well. There's even uh, cases where people use sand. Um, you can even use uh, some organic materials such as sphagnum moss okay. or sawdust. Uh, but again, with any of that kind of stuff, it's gonna break down over time. So the, the basic function of any of these substrates is to kind of stabilize the plant uh, in the system so the water can run through or provide a place for the water to fill. Correct, and some of these provide a little bit more airspace than, than other material. Okay, well thank you Bruce. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.